In previous exercise, we used absolute values. In this exercise, we'll introduce you how to work with variable values. What we've changed is the demand in year one. We made it depending on price per jewel sold. So what you can do now is, for example, change the price to 40 and look over here and demand over there that uh, the values will change, right? Of course, because now the demand has increased. If you make it cheaper, demand increase. If you make it more expensive, the demand will decrease, right? So, but changing one value is not really very useful. So we put it back on 50. What we want is a sensitivity table where we see a range of price differences. And we want to see the effect on the net present value, internal return rate, and the payback period. Now, there's one thing we had to change. If you look at the payback period, now it, just a, it was just a sum where you just calculate those rows. But of course, if this is one, it means it's actually outside the payback period. It, it's maybe payback in year six or later, but we don't know. So, but what we do know is that it wasn't profitable. Okay, so what we have done is changed uh, the, the formula just a bit. So we just check if the sum of the values is equal to five. If it is, then we just say that it's not profitable. This will show up in the table. So how do you create that table? Well, first of all, we need the values over here. So we just get them from our previous answers. There you go. Copy. Oh, sorry. Put the formula in there. You cannot put a formula directly in there. There needs to be these variable cells. Try it out what happens uh, if you put MPV and other values right away here. You will see that creating the table will not work. So how do we create the table? Well, we select all our values over here, right? We go to data and then in data there is data table. That's the one we need. When you select it, it will ask you for a row input cell and a column input cell. Now in this case, our formula stands in our row right over here. So we, we want uh, the price to be the column input field. So this thing, what, what does it need to be? The price stands. So over there, price, keep, yep. And if I now push OK, you will see over here the table appearing. There you go, that's our table. So now you see all the values. So what's the next thing to do? Let's give a table. Well, sorry, a chat chart view uh, on it. Okay. Um, so what do we want? We want the scattered, right? Oh, let's first select our values. So first for the net present value, we're gonna take the scattered and we're gonna get, take this boot mark scattered. And then the first thing you see appearing, gonna put it over here, is something like this. Now, first thing you notice over here is the straight line. That's of course because once you hit uh, 75 euros, it will always be minus 25,000 euros. So that's not really relevant information. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually make the table a little bit smaller. So just to have one of them, I don't need the whole row over there. So it looks like this. Of course, the table doesn't look very nice. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the the, the data over here. It's not com called series one. It's of course our net present value. There you go, it updates the table. The next thing is of course, this is unreadable. So let's update it. Hop. Um, minimal value zero, well, that's okay. Um, let's just keep the value till 80, that's also okay, but, well, let's switch with 20 major units. So that's a little bit more readable, there you go. So that's our net present value. Um, okay, I'm just gonna copy this one, it's gonna be, easier copy up put a new one over there paste and now i don't want to calculate the net present value but i want to get the keep 
internal return rate. So I'm just gonna change it over there. You see the num num goes again to some useless value. So I'm gonna again make it a little bit smaller. Beep. Well, I'm just gonna do it this way and that way. Okay, looks already good. Gonna change the c the data from the Siri again. Now it's called internal return rate. There you go. S looks very similar. A little bit more rounded. Uh, last thing to do. Oh, let's do it again. Copy, paste. There you go. Now we're gonna do the payback period. Still, it's gonna be again less value. So I'm gonna move it. Oh. Just gonna move this over there. Could actually move it also over there, and then making it smaller. There you go. Okay, again, changing the data. Payback period. And well, you see, it's it's a little bit stupid to start counting from zero. So let's change this a little bit. Uh, it only starts at, let's see, down here, starts at 25, so why not start at 25, and it goes to 55, so that's good enough, and maybe we can make smaller units, let's say 10, so we get this view. There you go, right? So now you kind of have an idea of what happens when you change the price depending, well, when you change the demand depending on the price.